Good morning, juniors. Actually, it's good evening by the time you watch this. Um, today, we are going to talk about limiting reagents. Please open your textbook to page 359. And what we're going to do today is to um, advance a little bit further in our problem solving. Up to this point, we've been given one reactant amount and had to determine um, the amount of product. And today we're going to look at what happens in a problem when they give you two amounts, two amounts of reactants, and you need to determine what the product is. So uh, if you look at the board, over on the left-hand side, it says our goal for today. We're going to determine the limiting reactant between two different amounts. And then we also want to use that limiting reactant to calculate the amount of product. And feel free to uh, zoom in a little bit too much there. To pause this at any time so that you can take down your notes. So if we look at these problems over on the right hand side of our notes, um, these problems are going to involve two different amounts of reactants. And there's several things we have to do. First of all, we have to determine the limiting reactant. And this is the reactant that you are going to run out of first. The second thing we need to do is to determine the excess reactant, and this is the reactant that you're going to have left over. Um, and then we're going to use that limiting reactant to determine the amount of product. In terms of our recipe analogy, it might be something like this. If you have a recipe and you want to make um, chocolate chip cookies, and if you look at your ingredients, you have four eggs in front of you and you have six cups of flour. And what you are trying to decide is how many chocolate chip cookies can you make with four eggs and six cups of flour? Which one of those ingredients will you run out of first? And to do that, you have to consult your recipe. Um, in our case, if we look at the equation down at the bottom, you might have um, a given amount of nitrogen and a given amount of hydrogen and you want to determine which one of those reactants you're going to run out of first. And then by looking at that reactant, whichever one is limiting, that will determine how much ammonia you can make. So next, um, we're going to write down some steps. Write down some steps to solve limiting reactant problems. And I'm going to switch pages there. All right, so as we look up on the board, uh, steps to solving limiting reactant problems. These steps are over on the left-hand side of your screen. I'm going to try to zoom in and get over there. There we go. Feel free to pause this again to write down those steps. Zoom in just a little bit more. The first step um, is to select one of the reactant amounts. You're given two amounts of reactants, so select one and use that as your given. And then we're going to use stoichiometry to calculate how much of the other reactant is needed. The second step is we compare those amounts. After you've determined how much of the other reactant you need, you ask yourself, do I have that much sulfur or do you have that much copper? And the third thing we're going to determine is what is the limiting reactant. So now we're just going to go ahead and look over on the problem on the board on the right hand side of your screen. And I'm going to zoom out just a little bit here. Alright, so as I look at this problem, this problem says that we're given 80 grams of copper and 25 grams of sulfur. And we need to determine what is the limiting reactant for the following reaction. And I have an equation up on the board. And I'm going to go ahead and follow those steps that we just discussed as I solve this on the board. So the first thing that I want to do is um, select one of the reactants. I'm going to go ahead and select 80 grams of copper. And it says use that reactant to determine 
how much sulfur we need. So this is a mass, mass problem. I know I have, I have 80 grams of copper, and I want to determine how many grams of sulfur I'm going to need. So I'm going to go ahead and use three ratios here and go from grams of copper to moles of copper. And moles of copper to moles of sulfur. And once I get to moles of sulfur, then I can go to grams of sulfur. And so what I'm doing here is I'm saying, if I use up all 80 grams of copper, how many grams of sulfur do you need? Well, by using a periodic table, I can get my molar masses, and by using the balanced chemical equation, I can get my coefficients here. It looks like the molar mass of copper is 63.5 grams, and the molar mass of sulfur is 32.1 grams, and as I look at my balanced chemical equation, I can see my mole ratio is one mole of sulfur to two moles of copper. Now I'm gonna pause this for a minute because we need to plug and chug that into our calculator and see what we get for an answer. <laughs>